One possibility, of course, is, uh, is ECT, which uh, has been reported to help in some studies, uh, uh, but not always. Uh, ECT is primarily for mood disorders, uh, but there are actually quite a few patients who are deemed as clozapine uh, candidates, they're deemed as treatment refractory, who are actually schizoaffective bipolar type with, with severe psychotic symptoms that don't go away. Those patients uh, may respond to ECT because bipolar, even in the context of schizophrenia, schizoaffective bipolar type, may actually show a response to ECT. But another, uh, another strategy of a non-pharmacological uh, inter intervention that has been, again, published repeatedly is the use of transcranial magnetic uh, resonance stimulation. Uh, and, and, uh, or TMS, as we call it. Uh, TMS has been shown to suppress, inhibit, uh, non-stop refractory auditory hallucinations by, by inhibiting, by, by placing the, uh, uh, the magnet over the temporal parietal region uh, and use uh, the low hertz that, that are inhibitory instead of the high hertz, which are stimula stimulating. Uh, and several studies have shown a significant improvement uh, in, in the auditory hallucinations with this non-pharmacological neuromodulation. It's, it's exciting because, uh, because theoretically, uh, we can take TMS and turn it into DBS. Uh, DBS would be more convenient if the patient responds to TMS, which has to be done every day, you know, five days a week, on and on and on. It becomes laborious for the patient to come every day and have the, the treatment. So potentially in the future, and you know, I've, I've worked with a neurosurgeon on that methodology, uh, such patients may eventually be candidates for deep brain stimulation, DBS, where, where the stimulator is actually uh, surgically implanted right above the dura and, uh, and close the, the, the cranium. And, and then that, that's, uh, that's battery-operated st stimulator will actually do what TMS is doing, and the patient will, 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 will be relieved from the auditory hallucinations without having to come uh, several days a week uh, for daily treatment. Again, that is not yet taken uh, into, uh, you know, or used on a wide scale, but it, it has a promise. Treatment refractory schizophrenia refers to uh, the non-response of the positive symptoms, the psychotic symptom. However, we have never had any treatments for the negative symptoms and the cognitive deficits of schizophrenia. So basically, every schizophrenia patient in the world is technically treatment refractory if you include the, the cognitive and the, and the negative symptoms and not just the positive symptoms. So, so it is really one of the biggest unmet needs in psychiatry uh, to find uh, treatments for the negative and the cognitive deficits. And may, they may be two different drugs. Uh, it's, not, it's unlikely that the same drug will work on the negative and the cognitive, just like it's very unlikely that one drug will work on the positive and negative and cognitive uh, symptoms of schizophrenia. So, uh, so the future may hold uh, some rational polypharmacy for schizophrenia, assuming that a medication is developed. And there's a lot of effort uh, by various uh, pharmaceutical companies to develop such drugs in conjunction and collaboration with academic psychiatrists, with NIMH, with the FDA, it's a group effort. Everybody is, is focusing on reducing negative symptoms and cognitive deficits because they are the major cause for disability in schizophrenia. So to answer your question, John, uh, until we have a medication for cognitive deficits, which are so important uh, for day-to-day -day functioning and being able to go back into vocational and social uh, functioning, uh, until we have a medication, a pharmacotherapeutic agent, which hopefully will emerge at some point. There are several studies going on. One, one methodology that is non-pharmacological was developed by psychologists, uh, neuropsychologists specifically, uh, who do a lot of cognitive testing. And, uh, and they found in the last few years, this is the last five, seven, eight years, uh, that training patients with computer technology, uh, giving them exercises uh, on the computer uh, on how to solve cognitive questions or cognitive problems uh, seems to, to gradually improve the patient's cognition. So 
that is a promising avenue. Multiple studies have been published, not all of them positive, but not all of them uh, different from placebo, uh, where the patient just plays with the computer without necessarily being given the instructions. Uh, but some are. Several uh, have, have shown promise. And so it's a, an exciting potential rehabilitation, brain rehabilitation for cognition, which, uh, because it's, uh, you know, it's labor intensive, unfortunately, many patients don't have access to it. But in research settings, uh, quite a few patients have shown benefit from it. Whether it's lasting, whether uh, it needs to be done continuously on a maintenance basis, you know, just like medication has to be given, you know, long-term daily dose of medication, uh, it'd be interesting to see whether the effect of cognitive remediation is transient or whether it can become permanent with continuous dosing once a week, once a month, remains to be seen.